he's saying the third base coach is out of the box. He's trying to get James Hoy's attention. James Hoy is acting like he doesn't hear him. So if you've been watching this Yankees Blue Jays series, you know that it's been a constant battle by both managers and teams to keep the third base and first base coaches in the coach's box. So I'm going to show a little bit of what happened, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on coaches and where they stand. Because I've coached third base for a long time. I never stand in the box. Almost nobody ever stands in the box. I have been yelled at by opposing coaches to get in the box. I've been told by umpires to get in the box. So I'm going to break that all down. Now, I believe a lot of this started with Aaron Judge and his wandering eyes. We made a video on that a few days ago. And I'm going to talk later in the video about how base coaches sometimes can pick up tells and then relay them the hitters. But here we have the Blue Jays yelling to get the third base coach of the Yankees in the third base coach's box. So now the umpire comes and tells them, says, you got to get in the box. They're complaining. And this is where it gets a little strange. You see here, he's all excited. Yeah, I told him to get in the box. And then you've got, you've got the manager over here. Somebody says something and he says, shut up, shut up, fat boy, shut up. So he calls somebody fat. This has been like an investigation. Everyone's trying to figure out who's he calling fat boy. Now, he's not talking to the third base coach for the Yankees, Rojas, because Rojas is Jack, and I think he'd probably beat the hell out of him. They flash quickly here to Aaron Boone, but he's not talking to Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone's already running out this way, and Aaron Boone's a pretty skinny guy. And so some people are speculating that it might be the hitting coach for the Yankees. Regardless of who it was, that wasn't very nice, especially from someone that doesn't exactly look to be in great shape. So everybody's going to huddle up here, and they're going to say, okay, he's got to stay in the box. And this is where the gamesmanship begins because then very soon after this, Aaron Boone is going to start to yell out to get the Blue Jays coaches in the coaching boxes. He's saying the third base coach is out of the box. He's trying to get James Hoy's attention. Now, this is from earlier in the game, and you can see that the Blue Jays' third base coach is nowhere close to the third base coaching box right there. Now, honestly, again, I've played at every level, and I've coached at a lot of different levels, and very rarely, and I mean very rarely, do you ever see the third base coach or the first base coach inside the actual coach's boxes. As a third base coach, you're always moving around depending on who's on base. And so if there's a man on first base, you're typically going to be back here. So you're going to be further back than the boxes because you want the runner at first. If he has to go first to third, you want to be out this way so they have a better angle to see you. If you get down this way too far, then as they're approaching second base, if they need to pick you up on a ball down the right field line, it's really difficult to see you if you're down this way. And so you're taught to be back this way. Now, if there's a man on second base, you're going to be on this side of the box because as the runner rounds third, you need to get down the line so that you can read the throw. You might hold the runner up late. And then when you're giving signs, a lot of times you're kind of bouncing back and forth because you have to make sure that the pitcher isn't blocking you from the base runner so that they are able to see your signs. Now, why have I personally been yelled at to get inside the box? And why do sometimes teams complain about third base coaches or first base coaches and try to get them inside the box? Is because you can technically try to steal. Again, we'll call it steal. I know sometimes people don't like when I say stealing signs. But you can attempt to figure out what pitch is coming. So let me give you a few examples. There are times where if you move up the line this way, you can see what grip the pitcher has on the ball inside their glove. So if you're down here, you can't get a good view into the glove. But the more you move up here, if it's a right-handed pitcher, you can sometimes see inside the glove to see if he's gripping a curveball, if he's gripping a fastball. And then if you wanted to, you could figure out a way to relay that to the hitter. Now, the other thing, and probably even the more popular thing to do, especially at lower levels, now with Pitchcom, you can't really do it in the big leagues, is you can go this way towards the line. And the more you get towards the line, the better view you have into the catcher. And if the catcher doesn't do a good job of making sure that his knees are close together, if his knees get wide, you can see the signs. And again, you can relay that. So as a coach, I'm always watching the opposing team's coaches, and I want to make sure, again, I'm not going to be a stickler. I'm not going to tell anyone that they have to stand in the box. But if you see a coach hovering around the line and you notice them looking 
this way towards the catcher, there could be a chance that he's trying to see the signs. And then I'm going to see if they're relaying them. And if they were, then I would ask the umpire to put them back in the box because I feel like they're trying to steal signs. Now, I was yelled at a few years ago in a high school game for being basically in this same position. And the opposing manager thought that I was trying to look into the pitcher's glove to find out what pitch he was throwing. And I actually had backed up because we had a hitter, Alex Lane, who was 6'5", probably 245 pounds that hit the ball 110 miles an hour. And I honestly didn't feel like standing right here with someone that big swinging a metal bat. So I would move back when he got up. And I was yelled at to return to the box. Umpire came out, said, you have to stay in the box. And that's usually what happens again. The umpires usually don't mandate that you stay in there unless they get a complaint from the opposing team. So then just to make them mad, I would just kind of stand like right here on the line. And then I would put my feet outside sometimes. And then they'd scream at me from the bench to get in the box. And then sometimes I'd come back in and then I would go back out. And the other team became so obsessed. The entire bench was screaming at me all game. And I thought it was great. Good. Let them worry about me and not focus on the game. So those are really the only reasons why they would mandate a coach to be in here. It's really to make sure that they're not trying to steal signs and then relay those signs in. So anyways, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.